This is a review of the Wolf Designs Savoy Triple Winder. This particular model comes in two different colors, Burwood and Black, and the one before you is the black model. The dimensions are 18 by 8 inches by 10 and 1 quarter. The suggested retail price of this unit is $1,865 US dollars. I've owned this unit for about three years now and thought it'd be a good time to make a review. Um, I guess we'd start with the packaging. The packaging is a big box like the one behind me here. Uh, inside that is a big sack which the winder goes inside and that's all covered by styrofoam. Over here is the power cable and the different attachments you can have to it. So depending on where you live in the world, you would just connect one of these other adapters and plug in and it should turn on. So to the actual watch winder itself. So this is a triple unit. So that means that inside here there's three winders. Each of them work independently from each other. So depending on which watch you have and how many rotations it takes to actually fully wind the watch, you would adjust it accordingly. Um, the watch is a bi-directional, I mean the winder is bi-directional which means it turns counterclockwise, clockwise or both. So if you have a watch that, um, an automatic watch that requires clockwise rotation to wind it, then you would just adjust it to a clockwise rotation. Same thing for um, counterclockwise. And above here we have watch storage. There are five watch storage units here. Each of them come with one of these little things here which you can wrap your strap, uh, your watch around. The problem with this is the total distance around this is over seven and a half inches. So unless you have a very large wrist, which is seven and a half inches or over, you may not find this very useful. So if it's a bracelet, for instance, which is not adjustable, um, this might not be very useful for you. But if you have a watch with an adjustable band, like a leather one, uh, this may come in handy. You can see here there's a key. And I can show you how this key works in just a little bit. I'll put that aside. Then over to the right here, we have the travel storage unit. So let's take this guy out. So the travel storage unit, I think this holds one watch here. And you put that in here. And the surfaces are all padded. So if your watch does move around, it shouldn't get scratched up or dinged or anything. And it is well made. So yeah, it looks nice. And there's some thought behind this. And then over here, there is a compartment to put other things, maybe extra straps. Um, spring bars, some tools, or whatever other watch related things that you own. Okay, we close that. And the closing mechanism is just a little push button here. And that goes back in. Um, the general finish of this product is very, very lustrous. It's very shiny everywhere, which you've kind of noticed. Um, it's more like a black piano finish, so when you do get scratches on it, they will show up. Um, the leather inside here feels really good. I've never had a problem with it in the last three years. I keep three watches at the top here. I keep three watches in the winders, and I haven't, haven't had a problem since I first got it. And you could probably refer to one of my other videos where I first picked up this unit, and I had a malfunction with the lights. It wasn't a big deal. I brought it to the dealer. They looked at it didn't do a thing and it just seemed to work fine after that. I am not too sure why. Yep, you can see at the top here how shiny it is. I do have a bunch of scratches on it from the years of use but um, yep, it's hardly noticeable unless you actually have some light. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to connect one of these adapters and plug in the winder and show you how it works. So on to the operation of the winder. Each of the winders are identical, so I'll show you how to reuse one of them and I should teach you how to use all of them. The first thing to note is on the left here, this knob controls the direction of rotation. 
The first setting is a clockwise rotation, the second setting is a counterclockwise rotation, and the third setting is a bidirectional, so it'll do clockwise and counterclockwise. To the right here, this knob has an off, an on, and a delayed start. I don't use the delayed start very much, so I can't tell you very much about it, but pretty much um, what that does is you set it for how many hours you want to delay, and then the winder will start after that time. I think you could configure it up to maybe 12 hours, I'm not too sure since I don't use it, so don't quote me on any of it. Uh, the middle buttons here, this one and this one, control the amount of rotations per day. The knob to the right is to increase the rotations, the knob on the left is to decrease the rotations. The in between there are two little lights. Those lights tell you if the unit is working properly or not, so depending on the color of the light, um, that's going to tell you if it's working or not. So red is bad. And in between there you have this LCD screen. That's how you know how many rotations per day this particular winder is set to. So let's do a quick configuration and yep, yeah, and we'll turn it on. So and then for an example we can do um, a counterclockwise rotation at 600 rotations per day. So if you ever wanted to do that kind of configuration, what you do first is you turn it on then you would set the left knob to counterclockwise and I'll set it here. I'm not too sure if you can see the setting on the screen but I do know that when the actual light dims you'll be able to see it a lot better. So right now it's set to 300 rotations per day and by pushing the button you increase the amount of rotations and they increment by 50. So you can hear every time I click because there's a nice beep which lets you know that it's actually working. So right now the winder is set to counterclockwise at 600 rotations per day. Give it a second, the LCD light will dim and you'll be able to see it and the move the, the winder will actually start winding. So now you can see the number of rotations per day. Since the winder has already done a couple rotations, um, it decrements the counter. So starting at 600, it'll move all the way down to zero and at that point it'll stop. If you can kindly see right on the top left there, oops, I got you close to it and it activated, but it just has a, a counterclockwise symbol. One thing you might notice is that light to the right of the LCD screen, it just constantly blinks. Uh, one problem I have with this unit is that blinking happens all the time. It's basically an everything is alright light, which it gets annoying. So if you have this in your bedroom and you find it hard to sleep with the blinking, um, then it might be a good idea to turn it off in the night. What I have is an uh, automatic um, timer for my outlet, which turns off the unit around 11 p.m. at night, then turns it back on at 4 a.m. So that means in between that time, um, the watch won't, I mean the winder won't be working, but at the same time it won't be blinking needlessly. I'll let this run for a couple more rotations and you can see the operation. One thing to note is the winders are absolutely silent. You won't be hearing them at all. We'll move the camera closer to the unit and um, I just want to show you that you won't be able to hear anything. And that's basically it for the operation of the unit. I will show you a few other things such as the battery operation and yeah, just a general look at the back of the unit, the side, and a closer look at the front. Here is the back of the unit. Much like the front, it's finished with uh, the nice black panel finish. At the bottom here, you have this uh, area where you put in the batteries. So I'll just open that up. Uh, one thing I really don't like is in order to open up that part, you have to unscrew um, this little screw on the left and one on the right. I would much prefer like a quick shut, maybe like a like a magnetic lock or something like that, just because unscrewing it and screwing it in can get a little tiresome if you have to replace the batteries every once in a while. I personally have not used the batteries at all, but I just wanted to show you that this does run on battery power if you need to. And 
and that is kind of it. It looks like that is one, two, three, four, five, six D batteries, of, if I'm not mistaken. So we are back at the front of the unit. Uh, one thing I want to show you is the actual uh, watch holders. So what they are is these padded um, cushions, I guess you could say. Um, Wolf says that these fit up to a 52 millimeter watch and they hold the watches pretty well. I own a number of divers myself between 40 and 45 millimeters. They fit perfectly fine and they are considered heavy watches. So um, what I can say is these actually hold it quite well. You shouldn't have a problem from watches falling out of the unit at all. Um, so in order to replace the unit, you just pick it up, pop it in, and then you'll hear it click at some point. And then at that point, it's in securely. Um, yeah, that's, oops, there, that's the click you want to hear. That's kind of it for that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you about the key. So let's lock it up. So in order to lock it up, you have to close the top down, push the, I guess, the glass screen in, and put the key in. And I think you go, nope, the other way. There you go. Nope. As you can see, I don't use this very often. Uh, yeah, okay, that's how you do it. So you put it in and then you go counterclockwise and that's to lock it. So when it's locked, you can't open up the front screen and you can't open up the top lid either. So to unlock, just do the reverse. So we went counterclockwise, this time just go clockwise. And that's it. Open the top, open the bottom. And other than that, um, that concludes the review of the Wolf Designs Savoy Triple Winder. If you have any comments or any questions about it, just uh, put them below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.